artist, a writer, an editor. He's done a million things in the comics industry and outside the comics industry as well. Welcome to the program, Joe Casada. Hey, thank you, man. And, and by the way, most of that stuff, legal. Some other stuff I can't talk about. Yeah, <laughs> yes. Some of those things that you're known for, we can't talk about. No. Yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, it's like, it's a, you know, if you know, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> we got you. We got you, Joe, totally. Thanks, so, man. of course, this past summer was your first time going back to the San Diego Comic-Con since the mm -hmm. pandemic. And, of course, you're coming to Fan Expo Canada in Toronto at the end of this month. Uh, of course, you've been you come here many times. I know ever since back since the 90s, you've been coming to this convention. So you've had a I long. Yeah, you've had a long experience with it. What is it about getting out there and meeting the fans that makes it so special? You know, it's when you work in comedy, again, I, I used to be a working musician, right? And, you know, when you're on stage and, you know, you, you, re you rehearse for hours on end, day after day, you get on stage and you get that immediate gratification or not, right? But you get immediate feedback. Comics, uh, you know, anything that, that's, just, you know, whether it's writing, drawing, um, it's a very isolated existence. And and as creators, we're faced with uh, with two demons. One of them is very immediate. It's a daily demon that we face, which is a blank page, whether you're writing or, or, or drawing. The other demon sort of creeps up on you over time. It's like, I don't care if you live in a royal palace. The four walls that, that compose your work area eventually start to feel a bit like a prison. Um, and you and you work there all day, and you don't, you know, you start to question: Is this any good? You know, and so, so to me, um, you know, clearly, when I put something out there, a story that I've written or drawn or both, and you know, sales are one thing, but meeting fans personally is such a joy to me um, because it's always a great experience. I mean, I, I can't, if I've had a bad experience, I mean, one or two maybe, and I, I just I wiped them out of my mind. It's just not even worth it, but. The fans again, and, and also it, it comics are very unique in that sense. That uh, I mean, it's changed a little bit, right? Because now movie stars go out and they do signings and stuff, which is unheard of at the time. But comics has always been unique where we get to meet our fans, our customers on a one to one basis. They can come up to us, approach us, ask questions. Um, and at the end of the day, I keep, I keep saying this you know, these, these are the people, these, these folks that come up to my table they pay my rent, they've given me a career, they've given me a, a life in comics. And without comics, so much of my life would be completely and radically different for the worst. So I am forever grateful to everyone, even people that don't like my stuff. I'm really, really grateful because they don't at one point, they probably picked it up and read something I've done. Um, and that just, you know, that, that jazzes me. Um, and the thing I love about Fan Expo Canada, I mean, I, it, it's, it's uh it's where I met Aman who 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 runs all the fan expo stuff and, and he's become a very dear, near and dear family friend, a huge supporter of my work very earlier, early on. So I've been supporter of his of his conventions. But the first time I went to Fan Expo Canada, I really didn't know what to expect. And it's this wall of humanity, like just like, but excited about comics, about anime, about everything. And I was like, this is rocking. I got to keep coming back here. But it's been a while. It's been, I think, I think it's been since 2009 since I've been to a fan expo, Canada. Really? I, I swear, so. I swear you did one in the teens, like 2017 or something like that. Yeah. Maybe I did, but I, I, I'd have to, I'd have to check on it because it, it feels, but I, when I, because the, 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 I, I had a very important event happen in 2009 when I was at the show. Uh, I want to talk about it here because I'm actually, it, once I'm done with you guys, uh, I'm going to click send on my latest newsletter, which talks about this event oh, in 2009. Okay. But I cannot, I'd have to check with Amon to see. I, I just, I don't have a recollection of, of another one after that, but I, but I probably have, you know, it just, it's a great show um, and with great energy. Uh, and uh, it's, it's, uh, you know, again, I, you know, who who knew? Who knew the Canadian fans were so lovely? Of course I knew. 
<laughs> well, you know, Joe, you, you, when you're talking about uh, not getting to uh, because of the type of work that you've done, and you know, and, and other creators done, you know, we've we've talked to creators in the past, and they talk about the same. It's a very similar experience. You you don't because yeah. you're singular. You're by yourself. I'm just wondering if, you, if is there is there ever been a moment that kind of always resonates or sticks out in your mind that you've met where a fan has come up to you and like shared a story that like really touched you? You know. I'm not boasting. It, it it happens quite often, right? And it's always, always. Uh, I take it. I take it to heart. And it's and, and you know. But there's there are fans that talk about you know uh, meeting me that like like their like their father was a fan of my work or or, or or and they were introduced to my work that way. I I you know. I think the ones that that, I mean, recently had a fan. I shouldn't say recently, about a year ago, a fan came up to my booth. I don't think I was there, but they left me a letter. And it was it was just such a heartwarming letter about their sort of history with my work that it, it, it touched me immensely. But the other thing that really gets to me are when are the are, are the it happens in particular with 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 fellow creators that come up to me and say, you don't know this, but and it'll be something that I've just forgotten about. Or, or a fan will say that. It's like, you know, you sent me an email. And I'm like, yeah, you know, I, I, I try to respond to as many emails that come to me personally as possible. Um, and those are the ones that also hit me because it's like, you know, you said X, Y, and Z in this email. And <laughs> I listen, I'm like, wow, that, that was a really insightful thing for me to say, you know, because I just, I just look at myself as some, you know, you know, blabbing idiot. Uh, but Again, when, when fans send me stuff, I just I, I take it all to heart. The, the good, the bad, the ugly, it's all part of the business and all and all and something that that you know inevitably I could learn from. But um having been a fan, having I mean, I've worked on I've been on all sides of the table. I've been on the fan side of the table, I've been on the pro side of the table, I've been on the business side of the table. So I I try to come at these these situations with a with a respect and understanding of what it feels like to be on the other side. You know, to have your portfolio reviewed, to have your, you know, just to meet a, a creator and, you know, uh, extend your hand to say, hello, I like your work or, you know, I don't like what you did with that character. And then we just talk, you know, it's, it's I find it fun and, and, and chastity. That's why the panels also are like my favorite thing to do in shows. Yeah, of course. Well, the panels, they, they are legendary, mm -hmm. but the, <laughs> since, you know, of course, uh, a year ago, you, you left Marvel, you've been doing other projects. I know that uh, you're now uh, working on a, a deal with Amazon, adapting comic-based material. You've done some covers for DC, but the one thing that I was really excited to hear is that you you directed a short film, The yeah. Fly, and uh -huh. it's a story about a storyteller. So what was it like putting that together? You know, Fly was something, I had the idea of Fly years and years ago, so much so that uh, the origins of it go back to, I mean, I mean, Brian, I was, I was working at Marvel. Brian Bendis was still there. We were taking, we had lunch after one of our big creative summits. And I was talking to Brian about stuff that I want to do. And I'm like, you know, I got kind of this little idea for a movie, short movie. And I described it to him. He's like, you should do that. You should do that. I'm like, yeah, but I got a day job, man. I just don't have time. Uh, so it's always been scratching in the back of my, of my head. Uh, and, you know, then I had, because I've always wanted to direct, too. I've wanted to, to, to try my hand in it, because it's really, to me, it's just an extension of telling stories in comics. Um, if you if you, if you you could do it right in comics, you know, it, it should translate to film, but you just never know. So it was one of those bucket list things for me. And I, and I had an opportunity to direct um, a four-minute webisode for Ages of S.H.I.E.L.D., right? So, so, my, so my first time directing... Um, I, I, you know, they, they threw me in the fire, but not really. They, they, the, 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 you know, the, the, the writers at Shield, the producers, and I, mean, I was one of the producers. But you know, I, at this point, if I'm going to direct, I'm, I'm just a dude directing. So uh, I had to fly to LA. I spent a month out in LA where I shadowed two of our better directors to sort of just see how, you know, this is how it works, right? Because this is a, this is a pro set. This is not just like, hey. Let's get some friends together. My dad's got a barn. My buddy's got a camera. Let's go, right? These are these were the professional folk uh, with years of experience. So I didn't want to make a 
fool of myself. So I shadowed them for a month. I did extensive storyboards for a four minute episode, which made everybody's life, I think, a lot easier. Uh, and um, when I finally got to be on that side of the camera, um, it was addicting. It was like, oh, give me more of that. I went right here, right, right, just give it to me right there in the veins, right? Um, it was it, it was a blast. So so it, it started to, to to spark me to, I gotta do this thing, I gotta do this thing. And then COVID. So with COVID, you know, we're all working, but you know, you also have a lot of extra time on your hands. You got a lot of friends with a lot of extra time on your hands. So um, so I said, this is the time to do it. You know, I had some, I had some, you know, little disposable cash. Uh, and I said, screw it, you know, it's just, you know, I, I could spend it on something stupid or I could just spend it on this and have some fun. And we did, you know, I wrote a, wrote a small script. We, we, we filmed it just to see if we could. Um, we had our, our, our crew, I think out of all our crew, we, you know, I think at some point we had maybe 11, 12 people that we would need. Uh, I think only three or four of them had had any experience being on an actual movie set. Um, none of the actors had ever performed on camera. Uh, it was a blast. And then when it was done, uh, my cinematographer slash editor, Ben said, you know, you should enter this into some film festivals. So I'm like, okay. So we did, and you know, we we got accepted to a whole bunch. We're still getting accepted to some, uh, won some awards. Um, but it was really the experience because it wasn't it wasn't fly isn't meant to be like, hey, this is this is a this is sort of a a sample of uh for a feature film. And it's not that it's just a short story, a told in one, oh Henryish kind of story about a girl who's a storyteller who wants to get into college wants to get into a writing school um, and what happens. Uh, so it's pretty simple. And, you know, it, it's uh, surprisingly, you know, it's, it's, it's got, got, got some legs, you know, and it's, and it's not superheroes. I didn't want to do superheroes. Of course. It was the last thing I wanted to do uh, because that's all I do all day long. <laughs> so, uh, and, I, and I do tell other kinds of stories. So, but yeah, thanks, man. Cool. We, yeah, totally. You know, and that that brings uh, to mind to me is like, I'm looking, you know, obviously you've had a long career. Uh, you've done so many different things, you know, as we discussed earlier. And I'm just thinking like, if you were to look back and think about young Joe growing up, you know, like in Queens and, and thinking towards the future, do you, was there ever any inkling that any of this success was going to come your way at all? Like, did you ever think that, you know, like, was that, I wanted to work in comics. I wanted to do music. I wanted to make a short film. Like any of that stuff, was that ever in your mind back then? Or was it just like, you just yeah, wanted to I, be creative? Yeah, as, as a kid, I, I enjoyed comics. You know, uh, as I've often said, I, I dropped them at the age of 12 mm -hmm. when I discovered two important things in my life, baseball and girls, and not necessarily in that order. <laughs> but uh, but I dropped them. I dropped them completely. And and now I I, I was always artistic. I, I I always drew well, and uh, that's a much longer story. But you know, I I ended up going to an art college, School of Visual Arts, where I majored in illustration. Um, and I had I will admit it. I was I was a snob uh, when it came to comics. I looked down on comics because I remembered them from when I was a kid thinking, well, it's just a kid's medium. It doesn't mean that kids write those books. It's just like, for the same reason that, that I had no aspirations to write children's books, right? I wanted to do something that was, you know, with my illustration that was more geared towards adults. Um, so I, I, I had this sort of really bias against comics. It wasn't what I wanted to do so much so, uh, I say this with no pride, that I, I, just for the heck of it, as electives, I had taken Harvey Kurtzman's uh, class on, on humor illustration and Will Eisner's sequential art class. Uh, I failed them both. Uh, <laughs> and, and now mind you, you had to work really hard to fail those classes, right? And, and at the end of the day, all you needed to do to pass was do your final assignment. But I cared so little about comics, I just didn't do the final assignments. I just didn't pass those classes. It was, a, uh, you know, and, and today I look back on it and I'm like, I think I got a lot out of Harvey's class because Harvey was very engaging. And I don't think I got as much out of Will's class as I should have, but that's on me because, you know, I didn't want to learn how to ink. I didn't want to learn. I just wanted to paint. I want to be an illustrator. So, um, so that's how little regard I had for comics at that time. 
until I was 25 and somebody threw Return of the Dark Knight in front of me. And then I read, literally, the next book I read was Watchmen. And I'm like, what? What is happening here? Um, so no, as a kid, I loved Marvel. Really loved Marvel. Couldn't wrap my mind around DC. Um, and I remember drawing, creating my own comic book characters. But once that phase passed, it passed. Um, and, and in some respects, I think that my time away um, helped me and prepared me for the time when I came back and also sort of my perspective, looking at comics and my perspective, especially when I came in as editor in chief, because while I have a reverence for comics, I don't have, I didn't have uh, a historical reverence where, you know, uh, these things cannot be changed, right? These things are locked in place and should be, should be kept in a case pristine. I mean, it gave me an ability to, um, to be able to look at them, uh, properties, these, these characters and these stories, and even my own and say, you know, nothing's that precious. As long as, you know, as long as you don't break them, you might be able to do some fun things with them. So, um, so I, I think it, it, it it, it sort of you know, my my many years in the in the wilderness uh, away from comics uh, actually helped me a lot. Yeah, well, no, it's interesting that you talk about that uh, with the editorial. Of course, first with Marvel Knights, you know, you and Jimmy figured out that if we put the right people with the right characters, we're going to get dynamic stories. Of course, at that time, Marvel Knights was unlike anything else that was on the stands. And then, of course, you you moved up to editor in chief at Marvel. And that 2001 to 2004 period, pretty much most of those titles, the re rereadability of those books, you can go back to them all the time. And it's because, you know, you, you made the, the, the smart choice of going, we're going to put these in the hands of the right creators and we're going to let them tell their stories. We're not going to have big crossover events for a long while. And we're going to let them create their own epics within their books. And so because of that, we get some great work from Bendis and Grant Morrison, uh, Straczynski, all these guys doing iconic runs with each of Marvel's characters. How important was it for you to actually give the creators like that space to breathe as opposed to having to worry about tying into stuff? Yeah, I mean, look, it, it was, <clears throat> pardon me. <clears throat> they say, uh, you know, what's the old, the old saying? <clears throat> Necessity is the mother of invention. Hold on. All right. <laughs> Got a little... <laughs> necessity is the, the the mother of it right so so you know we, we were in chapter 11 we had uh we really had very little to lose you know it was kind of you know it's it's the best seat on the titanic at that point so but we also knew um <clears throat> you know i find this and, and and i'll give you i'll give you a little a little clue when when any industry especially entertainment business starts to say well you know the reason our stuff isn't doing well the reason we're not selling as well as we used to um is because you know there's video games and there's this and there's that and there's other there's a bifurcation of entertainment that is that is that is taking eyeballs and customers away from us right now this isn't this is uh, this isn't doesn't uh i'm not talking about the ebb and flow right because there's you know some years you have better years and not so good years and a lot of that, a lot of that can have to do with, do with the economy um, uh, COVID, I mean, you name it, right? A lot of things can come into play. But when you see an industry that's sort of sinking and they start blaming other things for their, uh, for their troubles, generally it's, it's the product. It's that you're not putting out a compelling product. And, and when Bill Jemis, our CEO at that time, and myself, when we, when, when we started to strategize, we, we really felt that if we imp if Marvel Knights showed me anything and showed Bill anything, is that you know if you if you improve your product your stories, um, fans will come, and and you know literally it was a point in the industry people were like well we're never gonna we're never gonna get those fans back because they're playing video games right we're never gonna get young kids back because they're playing video games, um, and we just didn't we just didn't buy into it. So, so we, and, and the other thing was that Marvel for a very, very long time was very artist centric, right? Nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with desiring beautiful books, but it was at the sake of stories. And 
and our feeling was, uh, and it's funny because 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 uh, I love Todd McFarlane. He's, he's he's one of my favorite people. But Todd and I um, disagree on this. We're on complete opposite sides of this, right? Where where his feeling is that you could put an incredible artist on a book, and his dog could write it, and he could still sell a lot of copies of that book. And and he's right, right? He's right. Um, whereas you you can't have his dog draw a book and have Shakespeare write it and sell as much. He's right there too. The difference is that pretty book that his dog has written, you may only sell one, one time, right? By the second or third issue, if, you, if you've cultivated a reader base, not a speculator, speculator base, but people that want to read stories, then my feeling is that by the second or third issue, people are like, oh, I've seen the pretty art. What am I reading? Right. Whereas, you know, and also, by the way, you know, saying that, that you know, your dog writes it, draws it or something, it, it's a little far fetched. Right. But, but I, we discovered that, and our feeling was that, you know, even without a superstar artist, if we could have a solid artist draw a book with brilliant writing, that the life, the shelf life of that, of that book, the trade paperbacks of that book, uh, the hardcover collections of that book, issue after issue, will sustain longer than this just a pretty art with no story. Um, and and that's the other part that he's not putting into the equation, which is like, well, what about what about the collections? You know, what happens then? Right? Who wants to read a collection? So so we disagree on that. And, and I'm not saying he's wrong and I'm right, but just you know that that's sort of our feeling on it. But that's really what our was our approach. And we went out there and we said, let's get the best writers possible and let's try to create the best stories possible and you know uh one of the keys to my success however you want to define that is getting people that are infinitely more talented than me and let them do what they do just get out of their way um and then you know there as a as a as, a, as an editor or editor-in-chief there, there are times where you know someone may be you know uh, you see them going completely off the rails and you just want to say, Hey, just, you might want to think about X, Y, and Z. Right. And I sort of bring them back. Right. Uh, that That's really our, that, that, that's really our job. It's not to write the stories for them. It's not to, um, not to put creators in a box, but, um, but just to be there uh, and, and provide some guardrails so that, you know, we're all on the same page. Yeah, I got to imagine that over your years, uh, especially as an editor, that you've had a few uh, discussions, I'll say, um, with other creators in, in which you're having that ebb and flow of, you know, mm -hmm. like you're trying to guide a ship, you know, in its totality <laughs> versus, you know, the dinghy on the side. That's one aspect of a, a greater mm -hmm. universe. You know, you don't want it to capsize. So you kind of mm -hmm. give them direction. I, I'm sure you've had a few of those uh the types of discussions where you have to kind of like help correct that little, that little boat off to the side. You know, I, there, there've been a few, but you know, we're talking about professionals, right? So for the most yeah. part, they understand the job, right? Right. They understand that, you know, none of us own these characters. I, I always say that, that when you work at Marvel, whether you work as uh, a freelancer or someone on staff uh, in editorial at Marvel studios at animation, we are all trust fund creative babies, creative trust fund babies. We have been given this vault filled with gold, right? Spider-Man, Iron Man, Captain America. And it's up to us to, uh, to reinvest in these characters and try to, you know, make something of it or screw it up really badly, right? Um, and it, you know, I, I, I've never forgotten sight of that, 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 that a very large part of my success over the years has been the fact that like, I get to play with Spider-Man, I get to play with Daredevil, I get to play with, with the Avengers. Uh, and you know, I, I, you know, I, you know, me and other creators, we've added to that canvas, but that canvas was there, uh, and created long before we got there. Um, and I think everybody understands that to, to, to a very large extent. Uh, so, so those conversations were, were few and far between. And, you know, and there were times where, where, where a writer, an artist, you know, we, we, we have a certain 
DNA and sort of like, like, you know, program that we live by at Marvel, right? Like how to do our books and stuff. And sometimes people just don't fit into the program. Sometimes people fit better into a PC program or, our, you know, it, it, so, so sometimes it's just a bad mix. Um, but, uh, but I think also coming from, you know, having been on the other side of the table and understanding how creators think, because I am one, um, you know, the, I think it enabled me to deliver messages in, in a different way. I mean, uh, one of the conversations that I would always have with, you know, when we were trying to bring somebody over or signing a contract and like, look, this is business. And I don't control every aspect of the business. I, I control a lot of the cre creative aspect of the publishing business when I was editor in chief. Um, and I cannot guarantee you right? Even though we'll pay you what you want, I cannot guarantee you that it will always go smoothly. I cannot guarantee you that at some point, we may not have to kind of screw you, right? And by that, it could be anything, like your book gets canceled, we have to move you off that book because it's not working, whatever it may be. Stuff happens. I've been through it. What I can guarantee you is that if that's going to happen, I'll tell you, and I'll tell you why. And hopefully uh, you'll understand, right? And, and, and I found that that policy has worked out well um, because it, when I used to work at Marvel as a freelancer and I would hear all these horror stories about people just sort of getting bounced from books, getting fired, whatever, and not knowing why or not getting the news directly from the person they should be getting it from, but getting it from a junior employee because there were, you know, it was a lot of passive aggressive, like non-confrontational stuff. And it just, I, I, and I just think that leads to bad blood. And even on the occasions where I had to deliver bad news, eventually the person would come back and say, yeah, you know, I, I get it. I'm not happy about it, but thanks for being the one to tell me, you know, because that's what I would want. That's all I would want. I would want for my boss to tell me uh, straight from, 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 from their mouth and their point of view, just give me the real reason. Don't worry about my feelings. Just give it to me straight. I'll sulk if I have to sulk and eventually i'm an adult i'll get past it yeah no well that's a good way to go about it man like it's, it's just being up front and straight with everybody and then more I, I often just, than not they'll be straight with you so yeah I, again i i just i i have i have too much respect for for the creative community not to consider that well i got we're gonna talk to this adult and look sometimes there are a few times it did work you mm -hmm. know but it's just it's just the way that i i generally handle it in the past Right, of course. Yeah. Well, so one of the one of the coolest things that happened during a dark time, you know, during the pandemic, uh, in the heart of it in 2020, you know, a lot of people stuck in their homes with nothing to do. Uh, one of the things that I felt was like a bright spot was the uh, the premiere of Marvel Storyboards, where you <laughs> oh got to God. go out and talk with a bunch of different creatives yeah. and. Uh, it, to me, it was it was it was fun, of course, you know, getting you seeing you talk with these different creatives about their 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 paths in life and what they're doing, but also just seeing you get out there and seeing you in a different way. Like, you know, fans of comics have not seen you get out there and like, you know, have to learn how to throw a high kick and things like that. So right. what was it like putting that show together? You know, it, it was fun. And the basic pitch was, you know, I'm a fish out of water. I'm the idiot. I have no problems. Uh, I was, you know, I, I, I have no problems being self-defacing and I, you know, uh, I have no pride. I have no pride really. <laughs> uh, but it was just fun. It was just, just a, a simple pitch we put together and, and it was, it was a fun show. Um, yeah, I wish we had a chance to do more, but I'm glad we did what we did. And, uh, um, it was, you know, it was also a lot of work, right? Because, you know, we go to locations and, um, and you know, it, it was filmed prior to COVID. Yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, some days were kind of cold. So, <laughs> but it was, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I just, just really not much more to say about it. Just, you know, we just, yeah. we just got together and did the show. It was yeah. very funny when you showed that one uh, Daredevil cover and you were like, oh, I drew that. And the guy's response was good for you. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh man. Yeah. That's... No, but like, is there ever a chance that you might venture out and do a project like that again? No, I mean, I, I'm working on some stuff now that is so it's really labor intensive. Mm. So I, I don't 
I never say never, but I right now I can't think about it. You know, I I I have I have an idea for a second short movie that I'd love to get to, but I can't even think about it until maybe next year, maybe because I just don't know. Right. Uh, when I start announcing some of these projects I'm doing, I just I know they're going to be labor intensive. I just don't know if I could find the uh, sort of the, the 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 windows that I'll need to to, to shoot the film, but. Uh, but I got a lot on my plate, you know, so I, I just, I, I got to take it one day at a time. I, I've got this new relationship with Amazon Studios, uh, for first look deal with them, you know, uh, which doesn't preclude me from doing, you know, comics or anything else. Um, and I'm having a blast with those guys, uh, doing, doing, uh, more comic, you know, cons than I've done in a while. Uh, so that's a lot of fun too. So, you know, I'm traveling and, you know, wheeling and dealing and, uh, uh, but, loving comics you know it, it, it's it's the place that uh that that i just always seem to come back to and and i just it's it's where I, you know i i've had opportunities to, to to move away and do other things but i always come back here uh and just to, it's not for the money because you know it it's you know it, it's i i can't complain i've done well in comics you know but um but it's it's you know if 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 it's the people that this is what this is why you know when 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 trolls and people like that yell at creators right it's it's like they're not in comics for the money really because it's a living and you could do well but ultimately you could take those skills if you're an artist and do storyboards animation and probably make more money but you're doing it because you just love the medium. Um, and that's just the way, the way I've always felt about it. So I just, I love the media, but even if I go off to do something, you know, in some other world, uh, I will always come back to this because to me, it's, it's, it's the most, for, for the way that I tell stories, it's the, 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 the purest way for me to do it. Right. With, with, where, where at least I know that's, that's, that's about as close to my vision as I can, I can get, you know, whereas other mediums, you know, it's a lot of the more expensive the product costs, the more hands are uh, are ready to you know mold your idea into right. something else. So right, right. I, I I I you know it sounds like when you're like as you're describing some of that, uh, you know obviously you have a little bit different level of freedom. I won't say more freedom. I'll just say a different level of freedom compared to when you were editor in chief. Yeah. Um, you know. And I'm I'm just wondering, like, how like now that you you've moved past that, like, how is it how is it feeling? Like, are you are you really excited about all these opportunities? It sounds like you are, which is awesome, you know. Yeah. But do you do you ever miss being the editor? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like that's no, somebody else's I, headache. Yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't that, but by the way, I, I don't. I don't want that to sound, you know derogatory in any way no i don't no i don't you know as a matter of fact you know i i uh i talked to cb sabolsky uh current editor-in-chief you know uh once every few weeks we'll do a zoom call and when we end the zoom call i always say Steve's man i could never do what you do today i i just i just don't know how you do it uh you know i had my time and you know i'm always there for advice and stuff but but i don't know if i could if i could um could manage the waters that he manages, right? And, and again, maybe it's just because I've been there, done that, and I just, you know, I moved on to other things. And in retrospect, I'm like, wow, that was that was crazy, but it was fun, but it was crazy, right? Um, and I'm having, you know, a different kind of fun right now. So, um, so, you know, a, a buddy of mine pointed it out to me, and I guess I sort of subconsciously knew it. So I always say this that that you know, outside of Stan, I'm kind of perhaps the only editor in chief that walked away unscathed, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. without hating the company or the company hating them. And uh, I have a great relationship with Marvel, a great relationship with Disney. I still do work for them. Um, and but now I have the ability to do other things. And I have, I have so many friends at Marvel. Um, and uh, and you know, sometimes like like you know. I get a little bit of insider information, like no, 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 I don't want to know, I don't want to know, I don't want to. Know. I, I kind of want to. I, I want to enjoy the. I want to enjoy the product as it comes out, the stories as it come out, right? Um, like I can. And so, so I was looking forward to, 
you know, it's not like over my, you know, 22 years as an employee, 24, if you count Marvel Knights, it's not like I wasn't creating things, right? I mean, so I, you know, I have a, I have a little, you know, digital logbook where I was writing down ideas, not superhero stuff, because anything that felt like it was Marvel, well, you know, I, I bring it to Marvel, they're paying my rent. So, uh, but I have other ideas for things. And with, with the thought that someday, you know, I'm not going to be here forever. Someday I'll do these ideas or I'll, I'll attempt to do these ideas. Um, and, you know, as it, as it, you know, I've been talking about this two years prior to the actual announcement uh, of my, my departure. Um, I knew it was coming. I, I, I knew that, you know, I, it was time. And, and I remember it was actually a conversation with Brian Bendis um, where my daughter was close to graduating college. I'm sort of looking back on stuff and saying, you know, I'm, I, I, I wonder when it's all said and done, what, what am I leaving behind for her outside of a legacy at Marvel? If, I, if there is any, that, that is kind of really not just worthless to her, right? I, I mean, it just doesn't mean anything to her. It's just, it's, it's, it was my thing. Um, but I have these characters that I just want to do. And, and Brian says something to me that I never thought of. He said, well, what do you have left to do up there? what what haven't you done up there i was like oh man i've kind of yeah i kind of done just about everything here and that really drove it home and really got me thinking about the future so so when so 16 months ago 17 months ago when the announcement came out i was really excited at the opportunities that might arise and who would call me on the phone right folks like amazon and things like that the the unexpected thing was so, oh, and by the way, also, I need to add that, 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 that if not for COVID, because COVID separated us, the, the editorial group, right? We were all scattered around the world. So that office camaraderie, um, we all mourned it for a while. We had time to mourn it because the truth of the matter is that the thing that I miss at Marvel are the people. But COVID meant that there were no hugs and 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 crying and stuff which would have happened uh but so it sort of tempered that a little bit because we had already separated um but the thing that was unexpected to me uh and again it happened with the with the i went to la to 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 meet a buddy of mine and and and, and he had often put offers in front of me over over my time at marvel and you know i i'm i'm you know i bleed marvel red and i'm an exclusive employee and i'm true blue true red whatever it may be um and then every time he brings something up i'm like i, I can't hear it i can't hear it i'm not leaving marvel i'm exclusive to the company you know i can't all right so we went to lunch and we started talking and uh and I'm like hey you know what pitch me something ask me something <laughs> And he did. And I'm like, yeah, I don't want to do that, but I can actually hear it. And it was such a weird feeling. And 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 and, and I felt so liberated that, I, that, it, that it occurred to me that, you know, I, I had been married to the same creative wife for 24 years. And now I get to play creative Tinder uh, and just see <laughs> what's out there for me, right? What, what's, what's exciting. And you know, I, I turned down a lot more things than I accept. Um, but I, you know, it's just, it's just most of it has to do with time or, or whether I could think, think I'm good for a particular project. Uh, and that's been really exciting. And, uh, just, just a feeling I haven't had since I was freelancing or doing, or doing event comics. Um, that was really, really, really unique and interesting and actually, and doing shows again and, uh, and hanging out with creators without the shadow of me being someone that works for the big company, right? You'd be surprised how conversations can be very, very different. Um, that's also been really, really cool. I, I just got this it's idea interesting, now. It's interesting to see that you're in the uh, the hip divorcee creative stage yeah. of your career. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'm just picturing Joe now every time you're making a decision, like, you know, actually maybe you create an app for this. Just this is how all comic creators will work moving yeah. forward. Right. Like swiping right, left, right. swiping right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, here, here, here's, here's a job offer. You know, yeah. you want. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> 
Oh, Comics okay. Tinder, man. I think that's that's a winner. Yeah, I'm telling you that that's that's just what it feels like. Like my phone rings or somebody emails me, or I get something over LinkedIn, and I'm like, you know, are you? Can you? Um, and they're all like, you know, for the most part, really wonderful offers, but just 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 not the right ones for me, especially with the game plan I have, which is really revolves around my daughter. It all revolves around my daughter, and and, and also things that 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 I feel. I could bring something to and make me happy as well. Um, but all with an eye towards, you know, hey, you know, someday I'll be I'll be long gone. I'm, I, I always say I, I'm one hamburger away uh, from juicy hamburger away from like just being dead. <laughs> wow, that's pretty morbid, Joe. Uh, it is. I think it that's is. the it this is the be, that's the best way to end up. You know, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right, see you guys. Have lunch. <laughs> and then we never saw him again. But that anyway, that was the Carl's Jr. It was delicious. It was delicious. <laughs> the best hamburger I ever had. <laughs> oh well, Joe. I want to thank you for taking the time to talk with us yes, today. Thanks. It's been fun, man. Yeah, and so of course, people listening right now, he will be at Toronto Comic Con August. Sorry, Fan Expo Canada on. August 24th to 27th. So definitely come down, check him out, get something signed. Yeah. What are his and, panels? Yeah. yeah they, they haven't posted my panel times yet. I usually do two, two panels, but if you go to their website, uh, Fan Expo's website, you could see my signing schedule. Uh, I'm actually going to be there for all four days, which, which, which I don't always do, but I love Toronto. Uh, and I would, re, would, re, would be remiss if I do not plug my Substack newsletter, which is which is really, you know, I, I'm on all social media platforms, just, you know, at Joe Casada. Uh, but um, I've really, I'm really addicted to Substack. I, I do a weekly newsletter there where I talk about, you know, some of my, my history, my stories, the comics biz, uh, offer a little advice, your mileage may, may, may vary. Uh, and uh it's uh, it's Joe Casada's drawing the line somewhere. Just go to Substack and just search by name or search drawing the line somewhere, and you can you can get on there. And the most important part is that it's free, 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 free. Yeah. Uh, no hidden costs, no add-ons, no in-app purchases. Just strictly free. Um, and you know there'll there'll be some tutorials on there eventually. Not, you know not not how to draw the human head because there's a lot of your hands because there's a lot of people out there who do that on YouTube and they do it so much better than I do, but tutorials on how to build your portfolio, how to pitch for the big companies. I'll be getting to those and really sort of, you know, uh, how to build your brand and, 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 and just more the mental game of comics and maybe right. I'll do a how to draw the head, but I really have no interest in that. Uh, yeah. I really enjoyed the, uh, the newsletter about the, uh, about the, the fan who was a Marvel shareholder. That yeah, was, that was uh, the last one. Yeah, yeah, Serge. Uh, that that uh, I, that that's just one of those stories that uh, that I, I I have a list of the stories that I want to get to, but I know that list keeps growing, and and I saw Serge at San Diego, and I'm like, oh my god, the Serge story. So you know, <laughs> we talked a little bit. He, I just wanted to get a few of the facts straight with him because I'm like, this is how, how I remember it. How do you remember it? Uh, so he was instrumental in me getting that one out there. And then, uh, I got a new one coming out today, probably within the next hour. Uh, well, actually this, this is pre-recorded, so it's already come out, Yeah, it's already uh, out there. but I will be, but you know, I, I, uh, I, I talk about, you know, um, you know, some of my past experiences in comics and, and, and also, you know, uh, yeah, just, 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 it, it's, it's, I, I'm having a blast writing it. I think people are having a blast reading it. Um, and uh, we're creating this little community of folks that that are just you know this discussion boards chat feature i'm on there all the time and uh, probably on there more than any other social platform at this point because it's just a fun place excellent there you go good stuff well thanks so much for talking with us man nice. hope you have a great day and we look forward to seeing you at fan expo you be there? canada oh yeah we'll you be there do. all right we awesome. are as people are hearing this we are there right now yeah Ooh. there you nice. go that that is that is incredibly better. Love it. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Let's do it Have again, a great guys. one. Yeah, this definitely. Is fun. All right. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Have a great one. Thank you. Thanks, Joe.